Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Irrigated with the showers of your blood, O higher mother of the Lord, in the good soil of your heart you produce fruit, the inexhaustible sustenance which you receive from God. Wherefore we entreat you to deliver from misfortune those who honor your memory. Lord of mercy, 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 O Christ God, worshiped and glorified in every season and in every hour in heaven and on earth, long-suffering, deeply compassionate, and greatly merciful, who loved the just and showed mercy upon the sinner, who called all men to salvation through the promise of blessings to come. Accept, O Lord, our prayers at this hour and perfect our lives according to your commandments. Sanctify our souls, cleanse our bodies, order our minds. <clears throat> Purify our thoughts and deliver us from all affliction, evil, and sickness. Compass us about with your holy angels, that guarded and guided by their legions, we may reach unity of faith and the knowledge of your unapproachable glory, for you are blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without defilement, you gave birth to God the word, to Theotokos. We magnify you. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. O God, have pity on us, and bless us, and show the light of your countenance upon us, and have mercy on us. Amen. O Christ, the true light, who enlightens and sanctifies every man who comes into the world, let the light of your countenance shine upon us, that in it we might behold the unapproachable light. Guide our footsteps in the keeping of your commandments, by the prayers of your most pure mother and of all your saints. Amen. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and on the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Now, for 
for this holy habitation, for every city and country, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord
possible that you were the Cronus or successor, you discovered action and entrance into vision, or spirit one of God. Therefore, directing the word of truth, you suffer for the faith, even to the shedding of your blood. O Bishop and Martyr Timothy, pray to Christ God that our souls may be saved. As you are voluntarily crucified for our sake, grant mercy to those who are called by your name. May God Orthodox Christians, led by your power, granting them victories over their adversaries by bestowing on them the invincible trophy, your weapon of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, with the saints give rest, O Christ, to the souls of your servants. For sickness and sorrow are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.
The Lord said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. sitting on top of his doghouse typing, you know, as if a dog can type. And uh, his little friend, the bird, comes up and says, you know, what are you doing? And Snoopy says, I'm writing a book. And what's the book about, is asked. He says, theology. And then the bird says, that's hard. What's the title? And Snoopy says, have you ever stopped to think that you might be wrong? You know? <laughs> And that's important in church life, you know, to sometimes stop and think that maybe we are misguided in the moment. Uh, less is more. To say less, do more, uh, to try to avoid falling into delusion. And, um, you know, delusion uh, is a real possibility in church life. We can get so caught up in the idea that somehow God is making us holy that we can, in fact, um, find ourselves in that state, which in Russian is called prelis, or uh, in English we translate spiritual delusion. So how do we avoid that pitfall? Well, the first is what I just mentioned, that each day that we would pray simply, that we would be delivered from spiritual delusion. <clears throat> you know, we have a wonderful prayer in the church's tradition, in that collection of prayers which is to be read after one receives Holy Communion. There is the prayer to the Theotokos which goes like this, O most holy Theotokos, the light of my darkened soul, my darkened soul, 
my hope, my protection, my refuge, my rest, and my joy. I thank you for you have permitted me, the unworthy, to be a partaker of the most pure body and precious blood of your Son. Give the light of understanding to the eyes of my heart, you that gave birth to the true light, the one who enlightens us. Enliven me who am deadened by sin, you that gave birth to the fountain of immortality. Have mercy on me, O loving Mother of the merciful God. And here's the really good line. Grant me compunction and contrition of heart, humility in my thoughts, and a release from the slavery of my own reasonings. A release from the slavery of my own reasonings. You know, so often we are enslaved by our own thoughts, by our own reasonings. We face something and we spend a lot of time thinking about it, struggling with it, deciding, should I do this, should I do that? Well, you know, get all bound up and we are enslaved by the slavery of our own reasoning. So we have to pray. And this prayer after receiving Holy Communion is a beautiful prayer, you know, that we would uh, let go of our own thoughts and ideas and that we would live simply and calmly uh, in God's grace and in his love. And that leads us to the second primary means of avoiding uh, the, the, the situation of spiritual delusion. The first is to pray that we would be released from uh, the slavery of our own thoughts, and the second is simply that we would seek with all our strength the greatest Christian virtue, the virtue which has been shown to us most perfectly by our Lord Jesus Christ, which is humility. You know, our Lord is so humble. How humble he is, how much he loves us. He's God and he becomes us and he dies for us on that cross. How humble he is, so humble. He asks nothing of us in the virtue of humility that he has not accomplished in a way that we can't even begin to think about, let alone imitate. He is so humble. And the primary chief Christian virtue, the virtue which will protect us wherever we are, whatever our circumstances, whether we are the most powerful person in the world or the least powerful person in the world, whether we are the, 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 the most capable or the least capable, the best educated, the least, no matter who we are, if we are humble, then we are protected by God, who is, in the person of Jesus Christ, incarnate humility. You know, the one who is in flesh humility. He, 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 he sees us in our humility. And then when we say, I am nothing, I have nothing, I possess nothing, then he fills us up. When we say with St. Paul, I am nothing but a clay pot, an earthen vessel, then he fills up that pot with treasure. We have a joke in our parish back home in Connecticut that maybe nowadays we shouldn't say we are clay pots, we should say we're cheap Tupperware, you know, just plastic containers in the kitchen, you know? You know, like when you have leftovers, you want to send them home with something, you pull out one of those little plastic things, you know, that's what we are. But in that little plastic thing, you know, my son Peter always gets excited when I bring home one of these little plastic things from visiting one of our nice ladies in our parish because he knows inside there's some treasure. You know, and, and that's what we have to be. We have to be humble. We're humble. And, and, and God fills us up. You know, and St. Paul reminds us with two, at least two, many more, I'm sure, but at least two times St. Paul reminds us in his letters about the essential centrality of humility. In Romans chapter 12, verse 3, he says, for by the grace given to me, I bid everyone among you not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith which God has assigned him. So I bid each and every one of you not to think more of yourself than you ought to. Just be sober. Don't say too much, don't say too little. Just be honest, humble. Honesty is a great path to humility. Tell the truth, and the truth will humble you. Then there's another phrase, a beautiful phrase in his letter to the Philippians, the Apostle writes, Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. You know, one of the hardest things in life, especially when 
You know, those of us who are in the church often, and most of us, I think, who are here this morning are people who go to church on a regular basis, right? <laughs> go to church for you? <laughs> right? It's possible then to judge those who don't because, you know, it's possible to judge others. It's possible to think, well, I'm a good person. I'm not part of the problem. I'm part of the solution, you know? But, but the path that keeps us safe from that great and devastating sin of spiritual delusion from the Prelis is to be humble, to think ourselves as the servant of all. You know, there's that wonderful moment in Holy Week when we read uh, about our Lord Jesus Christ at the supper, how he washes the feet of his disciples. He does not count himself better than that. You know, he counts himself worthy of doing that which is most humbling. Can you imagine? You know, I mean, it's not something we do on a regular basis, wash other people's feet, particularly not in some dusty town 2,000 years ago. You know, uh, how humble, that humility, that humility. So if we're humble and if we pray, and particularly if we pray the prayers that are given, you know, sometimes we're tempted to kind of uh, 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 do our own thing even when we pray, to somehow tell God what he already knows, tell him what he needs to do about it, tell him we'll be mad if he doesn't. Uh, uh, you know, it's better to just take refuge in what the church has given us, what has been selected for us, such as this beautiful prayer after Holy Communion, uh, to the Virgin Mary, to the Theotokos. Such a beautiful prayer. And uh, this is what we need to do, to be humble, to say our prayers, to keep things simple, to be honest, to be real, uh, to, to trust and listen to others uh, when they endeavor to correct us. You know, my father said one last thing often, uh, again, not from his own mind, not of his own invention, but of what he found in his own study of, uh, of, of the church tradition, the fathers, the saints, uh, the writings that we have received and kind of canonized. He used to always say, count the day that you are not humbled as a loss. Every day something should happen, you know, where we feel a little bit, our ears go a little red, you know, we feel a little bit sort of a little hot and bothered for a moment, you know, and then it reminds us we're not God, we're not particularly special or different, uh, we're just part of the wonderful uh, reality which God has created as he would have it, and he knows what he's doing, you know, so we need to humble ourselves, to seek out uh, that virtue of humility, uh, and to pray that we would be released from the slavery of our own reasonings and would live rather in function of the wisdom which is poured out upon us by God who loves us so much. Amen. Amen. Let us sing with all our soul and with all our minds. Let us sing. Mother Christine. 
brothers, the poor, and for the sisterhood of this holy monastery, for their health and salvation. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable holy Orthodox patriarchs, and for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy habitation. And for all our fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters, the Orthodox departed this life before us. And especially we pray for the newly departed servants of God, Peter, George, Gary, John, James, Scott, Nicholas, Blaze, John, Savas, Amy, Philip, Vera, and Dimitri, who here and throughout the world by sleep in the Lord. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, the sisterhood of this holy monastery, and all those for whom we have been asked to pray in this place, those who are sick and suffering, the archpriest John, the priest Costas, the archpriest Theodore, the archpriest Roscoe, the Archpriest Theodore, the Priest Paisus, Matushka, Juliana, Patricia, John, Suzanne, Sarah, John, Paul, Christopher, Kira, Trail, Roberta, Celia, Anastasius, Theodore, Matthew, Christina, Boris, and Paul. We also pray for those who were married recently, who are still celebrating that joy, Zacchaeus and Eva, Peter and George, and Benjamin and Daniel. We pray for these and for those whom we have forgotten. And for the pardon and remission of their sins. Senor, to Senor, to Senor, to Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable house, for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present who await your great and rich mercy. Supplication of your servants and have mercy on us according to the multitude of your great mercy. Send down your blessings and bounties upon us and upon all your people who await the rich mercy that comes from you. For you are a merciful God and you love mankind and to you we give glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Pray for the Lord your catechumen. Let us, the faithful, pray for the catechumens that the Lord may have mercy on them, that he may teach them the word of truth, that he may reveal to them the gospel of righteousness, that he may unite them to his holy Catholic apostolic church, and help them save them have mercy on them.
and enable us also whom you have placed in this your service by the power of your Holy Spirit, blamelessly and without offense, and the pure witness of our conscience, to call upon you at all times and in every place, that hearing us you may be merciful to us according to the multitude of your great goodness. For to you are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages.
for the gift of life that you to Now lay aside all the fears that we may receive the gift of the Lord. Let us mystically represent the church that you seek the price of the gift of life that you to Now lay aside all the fears that we may receive the gift of the Lord. Is the attitude the most blessed Metropolitan Teacup, Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of All America and Canada? His Eminence, the most Reverend Nathaniel, Archbishop of Detroit and the Romanian Episcopate? May the Lord God remember his kingdom always now endeavored unto ages of ages. All the bishops of the church, the priests, the deacons, the monks, the nuns, the faithful lay people, May the Lord God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages and ages. This country, its president, all those exercising civil authority on our behalf, may the Lord God guide and enlighten, and may he remember them always, now and ever, and unto ages and ages. All those who have fallen asleep in the Lord in the hope of resurrection to eternal life, may the Lord God remember his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages and ages. The sick and the suffering, all those in need of God's mercy and help and guidance, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. You and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Before the 
the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Son and your Holy Spirit, 
You brought us from our existence into being, and when we had fallen away, raised us up again, and ceased now to do all things, until you had brought us up to heaven, and have endowed us with your kingdom which is to come. For all these things we give thanks to your only begotten Son, and to your Holy Spirit, for all things of which we know, and of which we know not, whether manifest or unseen. And we thank you for this liturgy which you have found worthy to accept at our hands, even though there stand beside you thousands of archangels and hosts of angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, who soar aloft, borne on their wings, singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, Holy, 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 Amen. Amen. And 
that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Amen. Making the change by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly and remember us all when you come in the fullness of your kingdom. And grant, Father Almighty, that these holy gifts may be to those who partake of them. For the purification of soul, for the remission of sins, for the communion of your Holy Spirit, for the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness towards you and not for judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer to you this reasonable worship for those who have fallen asleep in the faith. Ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit in faith made perfect. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. It is especially the abbess and sisterhood of this holy monastery. We also offer to you this reasonable worship for the holy, for the whole world, for the civil authorities. Grant the civil authorities, O Lord, peaceful times that we in their tranquility may be a calm and peaceful life in all godliness and sanctity. Among the first, remember, O Lord, his beatitude, our metropolitan Tikhon, and his eminence, our archbishop, Nathaniel, Grant them for your holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly to be fine, the word of your truth. Remember all your people. And also remember, O Lord, this town and region in which we did dwell. Remember, O Lord, this holy habitation in every city and country. Remember, O Lord, those who dwell in faith in them. Remember, O Lord, the travelers by land, by sea, and by air. Remember, O Lord, the sick and the suffering. Remember, O Lord, the captives and the hostages, especially those who suffer for the faith. Remember, O Lord, all these and all those whom we have forgotten and their salvation. Remember, O Lord, those who bring offerings and do good works in your holy churches. Remember those who remember the poor and find us all sent forth your mercies. And grant, O Lord, that with one mouth and one heart we may praise your all honorable majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, shall be with you all. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, for the precious gifts offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our God, who loves mankind, receiving them upon his holy, heavenly, and ideal altars, a sweet spiritual fragrance, will send down upon us and return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our Lord, deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have Sin 
sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. Help us, o Lord. All things are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. Help us, o Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Help us, o Lord. A Christian enjoy your life painless, blameless, and peace when he could be fed before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Help us, o Lord. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life to Christ our God. To you we commend our whole life and all our hope, O Master, who loves mankind. We ask you and pray you in supplication. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries of this sacred and spiritual table with a pure conscience, for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of transgressions, for the communion of the Holy Spirit, for the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness towards you, and not for judgment or condemnation. Then make us worthy, Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call on you, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say,
forgive us, fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters. Forgive us and pray together with us. I believe, O Lord, and I confess that thou art truly Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners from the mind of the earth. And I believe also that this is true of thine Holy Most Holy God, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of God. Therefore, I pray thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, of word and of deed, committed in knowledge or ignorance, and to make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries, for the remission of my sins, and unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of thy mystery to thy enemies, neither like Judas will I give thee a kiss, but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of thy holy mysteries be neither to my judgment, nor to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the healing of soul and body. Amen.
us commend ourselves and each other and all our life to Christ our Lord. We thank you, O Master, lover of mankind, benefactor of our souls, that you have made us worthy this day of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Make straight our path, strengthen us all in your fear, guard our life, make firm our steps. Through the prayers and intercessions of the glorious day of Tolkos and ever Virgin Mary, and of all your saints. For you are our sanctification, to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, who blesses those who bless you and sanctifies those who trust in you, save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house, glorify them in return by your divine power and forsake us not, who put our hope in you. Give peace to your world, to your churches, to your priests, to all those in civil authority, and to all your people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights, and to you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and so the Lord is forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and so the Lord is forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and so the Through the prayers of St. John Chrysostom, whose liturgy we have celebrated this morning, through the prayers of the saints of North America, Herman of Alaska, and all those who have shown forth in the North American lands, through the prayers of the saints whom we commemorate today, especially among them the holy Hiram Martyr Timothy, through the prayers of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and through the prayers of all the saints, may he have mercy upon us and save us. For he is a good God who loves mankind. Christ is in our midst. He is in our shadow. Thank you very much for the privilege of serving here this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Blessing to have you with everyone. Welcome this morning. There's a light breakfast served in the hospitality room. Um, the lunch will be at 1 o'clock today, and at 12.30 I'd like to, I would have to volunteer Christine and Zoe and Zenaida to read the hours at 12.30. Probably the sisters won't come, but at least we can read them. Lunch will be at 1, and vespers maybe will be outside, depending on how nice the weather stays. If I'd be able to have it outside today. Christ is Glory to be our God, glory to be our God, glory to be our God. Glory to be our God. Glory to be our Lord, my God, that thou hast not rejected me a sinner and has made me worthy to be a partaker of thy holy things. I thank thee for thou hast permitted me the unworthy to be given thy most pure and heavenly gifts. But, O Master, O lovest mankind, who in our has died and rise again, and gave us thus these awesome and life creating mysteries for the good and sanctification of our souls and bodies. Let them be for the healing of our soul and body, the repelling of every adversary, the illumining of the eyes to my heart, the peace of my spiritual powers, that they may the love and faith, and the faith. The being kept by them in my holiness tonight, I may ever remember thy grace and never live for myself, but be our Lord and benefactor. So when I am passed by. 
Christ in our hearts. Christ here in the home of eternal life. May I attain to the last For the song is unseen.